Since its inception, the Cortex Innovation Community has been a catalyst for economic growth in the St. Louis region. The 200-acre complex is a hub for entrepreneurs, scientists, and creatives. While the brick and mortar development is impressive, Cortex is much more than a place. It's a wellspring of visionary ideas where startups are born and new companies and organizations can thrive. The newest CEO of Cortex, Sam Fiorello, says his organization has the power to convene and unite the area's largest employers and entrepreneurs, and he should know. He's the former COO of the Donald Danforth Plant Science Center. In a socially distanced interview, he describes how Cortex can help drive job growth while remaining committed to diversity and inclusion, bringing new talent to St. Louis and growing new talent in St. Louis. And now, a conversation with Sam Fiorello. Sam, thanks for joining us. Yeah, let's cut right to the hardball questions, those gotcha questions that journalists always have. Who is Sam Fiorello? What's he like? What makes him tick? What's his educational background? What's his family like? Well, Dennis, first of all, it's really great to be here and, and to get a chance to have a conversation with you. I, um, I, I mean, I have a story that is in some ways unique and in some ways is a classic American story. I'm a first generation. My um, mother and father were born and raised in a small town in Sicily and moved to the United States in 1960. Um, they were poor and they had a chance to have a, my dad had a job offer. My mother's great uncle has a construction firm. So they gave it a chance. I was born in 63, I'm the oldest of two. And um, first language was Italian. And I remember as if it were yesterday, going to kindergarten that first day when I was five and hearing this English spoken thinking, uh-oh, I'm gonna make a pivot, so. <laughs> I'm in trouble now. I'm in trouble now. So it's, uh, you know, a terrific experience. My parents were um, incredibly loving and I had a, uh, uh, you know, my sister and I were the center of that, but the message from the day um, we were born is, you know, to work hard and education is the most important thing to advance and there are great opportunities um, to be had. And so I really feel fortunate um, I spent a lot of summers, those early in my life, um, in Sicily with my grandparents. Um, I developed a real sense of um, seeing the United States from a different lens and a different angle, which was really wonderful, um, and seeing how others live, so, yeah. And what brought you to St. Louis? So I was born and raised in Madison, Wisconsin. I went undergrad there to University of Wisconsin, um, met my wife there, and we moved around a lot. We started in Chicago, where I had a firm, I worked for an investment firm. She was getting her PhD at University of Chicago. Um, and then we moved to, I'm trying to keep the straight, so Austin, Texas was in the mix for a graduate degree for me. Um, I went to London School of Economics, we lived in London, <laughs> then Rome, then DC, and I worked for a consulting firm doing public-private partnerships, some trade work, a lot of work with the World Bank, um, and my wife finished her dissertation and was on the job market and came home after a um, uh, job search and said, you know, I have this offer at a university called Washington University in St. Louis, and I really want that job. It's a great place. And honestly, I thought, man, I've never even been to St. Louis, and should we really do this? And we did. That was 1995. Our oldest child was six months old. She started at um, Washington University in August, September of that year. And I um, was fortunate I found a job at Monsanto Company doing public-private partnerships, a lot of international developing country work. So that was our entry into St. Louis. And what kept you in St. Louis other than the job? Yeah, no, it's, you know, it's a fantastic place that, um, you know, my wife and I both love and it's now so much home. And for our children, now three, uh, they're St. Louisans. And um, um, we love it in that we've had incredible opportunity to flourish with our own careers. Um, and our children had fantastic educational experiences. Our, our youngest is in eighth grade in the Clayton Public Schools. Um, but it's uh, really a special place and, and, and I love it very much. And, and I think it really helps as I work to recruit others, companies or individuals to come here as a non-St. Louisan to tell the story about how great it is with authenticity. It's, it's really terrific. So you're a St. Louisan by choice, not accident of birth. That's right, that's right. Let me ask you another very tough question. Cortex, 
A lot of people have heard of Cortex, but yeah. I, I would guess most people don't really understand what Cortex is. Would you look over my shoulder at those three million viewers on the other side of that TV camera, explain to them what Cortex is. You know, it's actually a great question and it's more profound than you think. So an easy way to answer it in a way that it's answered often is Cortex is two million square feet of development going to three million. It's 400 plus companies, 6,000 plus jobs. Um, and those are all very important. But the way I look at it, and I really, Dennis, in the last nine months since I started try, try to help understand what Cortex is, and Cortex is a, I believe, a, um, a place of convening, the power of convening, right? We have these incredible anchor institutions that um, launched uh, Cortex at Washington University, St. Louis University, University of Missouri, St. Louis, BJC, and the Botan Botanical Garden, all of them on their own fantastic institutions. And the heads of those institutions wanted to create something that was um, separate, unique, and for the promotion of the city and the region. Um, and I think that's really the thing that's most powerful is that power to convene, to bring together the largest employers in the region with um, technology, entrepreneurs, workforce. So we create an environment where we can bring people together, best practices, shared ideas, um, and flourish and have a chance to thrive and, and really at our best. And I think we're still in our, you know, maybe teenage years for Cortex. At our best, I think we will be a key driver in helping lift this region up and achieve a goal of um, becoming a national model for inclusive um, and equitable prosperity, right? That's what I was going to ask you. What is Cortex going to contribute to the St. Louis environment, quality of life? I believe a CEO of an organization brings four things. One is vision. You're asked to look at over the horizon, what's the vision? Um, two is culture. What's the culture of the team you build and the culture of the organization? Three is to build a fantastic team. And then four is to help make sure that you bring the resources in to let the team achieve the aspirations that you have. Um, and in this time of COVID, as I'm thinking about this, you know, Cortex, I call it 3.0. There's the founding years with um, John Dubinsky and, and sort of laying this out. Then the Dennis Lauer incredible years where we got all this growth and, and incredible success. That's 2.0, 3.0, let me say that the position I'm in now. As we go through COVID and try to, try to predict what are the new normals, what are gonna be the changes that stick it's a really dangerous kind of thing to think you're going to predict. Um, but there are some knowns, and there are knowns yesterday and today and even more tomorrow. For example, that talent is the currency for the um, th thriving of a company and a region, especially in a 21st century economy where there's tech jobs. It's talent, not capital, not bricks and mortar, but talent, right? And that is for sure going to be true when we get the, out the other end of this, just the way it was before we started. And so with that known, I think to myself, what's one of the things that Cortex can do to be a driver of talent? Because if St. Louis can't figure out a way to meet its talent needs, either by importing the best and the brightest, you know, we talk a lot about that, but also, and I think more importantly, is mining the underutilized talent, local talent, the, the thousands and hundreds of thousands of men and women who, for whatever reason, are being underutilized, underemployed, unemployed, and a whole host of things. I believe that there's a path towards lifting those individuals up, building a skill set that will be um, valuable to the economy, to companies, help uh, us thrive and to do it in a way that's inclusive, that, that it, it looks that's, and feels much more like the representation of our That's a region. strong point because science and technology are generally perceived as being white and male. How do you address, how do you tackle something like that? Hmm. I think, Dennis, there's a couple of things at Cortex, a couple of areas. So as we think about how we're going to add to our offerings, there's, there, we're, I'm building upon some strengths. One is this incredible strength in this pillar, life sciences, right? It's adjacent to one of the great medical schools in the world and Washington University School of Medicine. We have St. Louis University Medical School uh, as our other um, partner, and then the hospital systems, right? So that's there and that is not to be ignored and won't be and we'll leverage that and continue to lift that up and, and, and drive a value proposition around um, the medical offerings. 
There is a whole host of non-medical technology. So whether it's geospatial or a whole host of other things that are technology, how can we um, play more and better in that? I think it's a false assumption to think that the only way to prepare talent is a four-year university degree. And I think that model is not suited our region or our country or the world well. It, we're just not keeping up. People read about there are millions of unfilled jobs in tech. More and more evidence shows that there are creative ways to take an individual who may just have a high school degree and with focused training, prepare them to enter these technology workforce. As an example, one of the things that I did and, and, and I'm most proud of perhaps while at the Danforth Center is I partner with the St. Louis Community College and in 2009 we created or brought to the, to the campus of the Danforth Center in Bridge Park a lab tech training program. A two-year training program and um, the um, folks who go through that program, many of them um, just out of high school, some um, uh, maybe did some college, others no college at all, um, some, uh, an individual was a displaced worker, auto worker for U UAW, lost his job, need to be retooled and retrained. But that program trained individuals to be skilled hands at the bench. Lab technicians, which are critical, that, that program had 97% of the graduates went straight into jobs. And it wasn't 100% because 3% decided they wanted to go and get a bachelor's degree. And almost two thirds of those graduates are people of color. I mean, I, I, I remember talking to a, um, an African-American woman when she entered the St. Louis Community College training program. She now works at one of the uh, biotech startups that's really an exciting company that makes, that uses beneficial microbes to infer plant vigor. So uh, reduce the amount of fertilizer and use these natural elements. But anyway, she, she works there now. And, and she had no idea that this was, that things like this even existed, that these kinds of startups or opportunities or what this, worldview is, and I think around them. So you have a single mom from North St. Louis whose daughter now sees mom leaving for work every day in a lab coat to work in a lab at Siteman Cancer Institute, and her community around her sees that, and you start to think, oh, that's a path I can see for myself. And so I think we need to do that, and we need to do it at scale. There's plenty of opportunity for that. I don't think that Cortex, I think it's folly to think that we can just reach out to those that we need to get to, that we really need to work with the groups that have spent years on the ground in communities that we talk about where the individual cohort lives and, and works and plays. And, um, and that is going to be vital and that's going to be an investment that I and other leaders at Cortex make in these next years is to build that trust. Um, and trust takes time, you know, and, and to build trust. Because I think if you ask, and I've asked many people uh, different organizations, what do you know what Cortex is and do you think about it? You have different answers, but the one common thing is it's a shiny thing and it's impressive, but it's out there. It's not for me, it's this thing. And, and that can't be. It has to, there has to be a sense of um, shared ownership, shared belonging. Um, I, I mean, I'm even we're even spending time looking at how can we make investments in the physical 200 acres to make it more welcoming and more inclusive. Um, you belong here. You belong here which is a statement of, by you being here, you benefit, but so do I. The solution to the diversity question is action. Don't talk about it, do something. It is, and it's going to take uh, focus, it's going to take prioritization, it's going to take investment, right? And the good news is, you know, I've spent a lot of time in the last months working with other leaders in the region on a strategic plan for the next decade of our region. And the top line North Star that everyone agreed upon is that St. Louis could become a national model for inclusive, equitable growth. And it was from the very beginning, we said, it can't be an afterthought, we have to embed in the very DNA of this, that this has to be something that's created where all people have access to these benefits and these jobs and these career paths. It can't be, um, frankly, people that just look like me, right? With a, a training like me, um, a, a, white man of privilege. And so it's intentional. It's built in from the beginning, not bolted on at the end. And it's going to take a lot of hard work, a lot of people working together, but I'm convinced we can get there. And once we do, Dennis, what's really exciting is when we figure this out, it will be a competitive advantage for our region because every employer out there, whether you're small, medium, or large, 
has articulated an aspiration to be more inclusive. The, you know, post George Floyd, these, mm -hmm. these proclamations came out saying, we have to do better and we want to be part of the solution. And I believe that everyone means it, but it's really hard to figure out how to do it. If we can figure out a way to lift up talent, especially people of color, um, it will give St. Louis competitive advantage and companies will want to be here and grow here because they think you're going to help us meet our needs. Lead by example. Exactly right. Yeah. How will Cortex relate to Greater St. Louis, Inc.? It's going to be an integral part of it. Is this the group you were talking about uh, looking long term, 10 years down? So, so if you think of Greater St. Louis, Inc. as a critical sort of umbrella organization and then looking at a bunch of best in class sort of regional offerings, Cortex will be is and will be one of them, right? We have worked with all of the folks, um, work closely with Jason Hall and the rest, on how can we together create programs, initiative, investments that are um, beneficial for the region and, and, and not try to jump in a lane where somebody else is and be compete with them, but mm -hmm. additive, so that we have partnerships and initiatives that are accretive to the region and lift us all up versus 14 different things that are going on. and and maybe they're um, suboptimal in size and other things, then let's think about how to overcome those barriers and get more density and more resources. And the thing, the mindset that I and, and the team at Cortex bring to every question is, how can Cortex, by adding itself to this mix, be accretive to the whole thing versus let's just get into it because it looks like, right? There's a lot of thought and, and which it takes discipline to say, no, this isn't really a good lane because I don't see how we really advance it. So, sounds like you're seeing Cortex as a driver, an engine. Of I hope so. Creative future. I hope so, and I believe so. And and um, more even, Dennis, than I did when I decided to throw my hat in the ring for the job. And again, I had the greatest job in the world. I I had the great privilege of being employee number one in this grand um, initiative that one of the greatest people. I think the world has ever known and, and Bill Danforth thought of. And, and so it took a lot for, for me to leave that. Well, let's, let's break that down a little bit for yeah. the viewer. You spent 20 plus years at Danforth Plant Science. Yeah. You were one of the founders of that institution. How did the board lure you out of that to come here? So I started in February of 97, Dr. Danforth. Um, I was then at Monsanto, chief of staff to the president at the time. Dr. Danforth came out with this audacious idea. And that audacious idea was that we should, we, St. Louis, should put a stake in the ground and say we are going to be the center for best in class plant and ag science and have an affiliated um, research park. What do you think? Do you want to be part of it? July 26th of 97, because it was my middle kids was born later that day. In fact, I had a pager on while giving this pitch to the board. You were multitasking. Um, it was multitasking, but I, you know, I was there at the very beginning and, and I'll tell you, it's a terrifying thing. It's a very different kind of a, 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 um, a nervousness going from a business plan and a blank slate to then helping to lead it. You're thinking, oh my gosh, there's no one I can blame. I, I don't screw this up. To stepping into a fantastic place like Cortex with its own history and, and saying a different kind of don't screw this up and, and, um, and uh, tension. But I, I um, again, it, it's, um, 23 years that I loved and I felt part of a team that built something great. Um, and again, worked um, in the shadow of an incredibly visionary, selfless person in Bill Danforth. So it took a lot to get uh, me Dr. to Dr. Danforth was a, an amazing gift to our society. Yeah. It sounds like you learned a lot from him and you're gonna plant a stake here and say Cortex is gonna be a leader. It's gonna be the place to be. Yeah, and I think what Dr. Danforth taught me is that working together, getting around a table and working together and not different organizations competing for resources, but if you come together and work on a big grand idea, you know, not little incremental things, but a big grand idea, and in fact, sometimes audacious, um, you can really move the needle. And I, I believe we can do that here as a community I think Cortex can be right in the middle of that and be a driver of all that. And I hope that if you and I are sitting here five and 10 years from now, we can start to count the um, numbers of individuals who today have been discounted, who are in leadership positions and organizations, and in fact, in C-suite um, positions that uh, we never could imagine today. And those are 
people of color and people that um, tend to be overlooked. I'm convinced it can happen, and, and I, I don't want to be Pollyannish or naive. I, I know it can, and it's incumbent on us to figure out a way to do it. Well, you're nine months into the job. What have you found to be the hardest part of it? You know, Dennis, the hardest part has just been the, in the COVID world. One of the things that the beating heart of Cortex was the energy and the people together and, and the programming mingling. and events and right. That's gone. That, you know, that's just because of COVID where physically very few people are here. All the events that are planned were planned or have been canceled. Um, most of my team work from home. I actually come to the office every day because I'm kind of a older dog and I need to leave the house for work. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, so that's been hard. It, it is um, lonely. I'm a people person. I really think that there's energy in a conversation like this. I think that literally breathing each other's air nourishes us. Um, body language, you can convey a sense of passion that doesn't come across two dimensional on a Zoom screen. And yeah, I'm thankful that we have that versus nothing, but it's it's no Has no that uh, energy, that vibe been lost, or is it just in recess for right now and after the whole pandemic thing, it'll be able to get right back into the step? I, I don't know if it's going to spring back to be just what it was, but I do know this, that though there are some jobs that are going to be suited for folks to do from wherever at home, the, the jobs that require teamwork and collaboration there, there is a high, high premium for physically being together. And that will, that'll come back and there'll be this, that energy again about let's build something together versus much more of an individual task. Um, I mean, if you're, I guess if you're coding or programming with headphones on all day, you can be wherever. But I think if you're um, trying to envision a new product or service that will change the world and be a start, launch a startup, it's, it's, there's no substitute for the energy and the creativity of teamwork physically together with whiteboards. Talked about the tough part of the job. What part excites you? What part do you get jazzed about and you say, this, I made the right move. This is why I came here. Yeah, so I feel that this is why I came here in um, thinking about sort of, again, how Cortex can be a driver to lifting this region up in the, in the years ahead of us. Um, in the work that we've done together with other regional players and sort of envisioning a, a brighter future, a better future for, for, for more and all. Um, those are all things that really get me excited. Um, you know, and, and the reality is the hard parts are these, Dennis, and I would be disingenuous if I didn't mention that COVID has been a hit to the financial model. So in the first nine months, I stepped into something where our revenues are slated to be down 30, 33%. We have unbudgeted expenditures that we didn't plan on that we're picking up. Um, you know, we have incredible things like the restaurants in our district that are having a hard time. And so we do what we can. We've helped with, you know, um, waiving rental payments and doing other things, but they're struggling. Um, we're we're, we're going to get through it. Um, but it's been, 2020 has been a year of austerity, really tightening the belts, getting rid of any... Um, kind of expenditures that aren't vital. I think 2021 is going to look a lot like 2020, to be perfectly honest with you. I know there's optimism of the vaccines, and that's great. Um, and just that's an incredible sign of just human achievement with great science, that in nine months, when a brand new virus is sequenced, the DNA is sequenced, and you have um, vaccines going in people's arms that are going to save their lives in nine months, is, is it's astounding. And it's only... Um, possible because of investments in science and passionate people working every day to say, how can we turn this discovery into something that's going to make the world better? Um, my father is now in a nursing home, and, and um, I, I'm hopeful that he'll be vaccinated by the end of the year. My mother, who's 81, um, hasn't seen my dad. She, she lives alone at, alone at home, hasn't seen my dad since March 3rd, and it's really difficult for both of them. And I, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel where they can be together again. Um, and so, um, yeah, th those are, it's, these are not um, typical times and there's a lot of tough parts. I'm convinced that it'll make the, when we get out of the other end of this thing and we're able to start building on our planning and dreams, it'll make it that much more, um, we'll can savor it that much it more. It won't be flipping a switch, it'll be just a slow build back to where you were and 
I think the thing that's important for our organization and others is not just to hunker down, strip down cost to nothing, and just wait out the storm, right? Yes, there's fiscal um, constraint, and we have to be mindful of the fact that there's a hit on resources, but we use this time to really um, think and strategize and build partnerships so that we're poised when the things open up to, to hit the ground running. Especially now, the kind of stuff we hope to do to change people's lives, there are a lot of people who are really suffering. You know, when I'm feeling sorry for myself sitting in my own, own office, I remind myself that my reality is so much better than hundreds of millions of people who are worried about where do I get my next meal? Um, how do I, you know, I've lost a loved one that I was in a hospital, I didn't, I didn't even get to say goodbye, and I don't have a job, uh, and, and, and. It's real suffering out there, and at no time has it been more important, the work of places like Cortex and other organizations to better people's lives than now. And it's frustrating not to be able to really jump right in and help, we do what we can. But boy, I really hope that we can be part of a new um, post-pandemic solution that, again, is more equitable and um, more resilient. You've been quoted as saying that this job is the capstone to your career. What are you hoping to achieve during your administration? What will Cortex look like in 10 or 15 years when you decide to retire? No, I, it's, a, it's a great question, and it's the thing that really um, was the prompted me to, to, to go after this job, and that is that um, you know, in the last, whatever it is, 10 or 15 years of my career, where, where, do, where can I make the most difference in our region? Um, you know, the Danforth Center does amazing stuff and makes positive impacts for the world, and so it's terrific, and I'm so proud of my affiliation, continued affiliation with the Danforth Center. Um, but for this Cortex job, I think it can really be a driver for changing the lives of individuals in our region. And right now, I'm trying to think about how to create new um, initiatives that um, will foster uh, greater access to opportunities, inclusion. So it's not just building more jobs. It's not just building better jobs, but it's who's, who has access to those jobs and what does that mix look like. And again, um, Dennis, I'm convinced that we can figure out a way through um, one-year, two-year training programs like the Community College Partnership, whether it's for the, the, the IT kind of tech lane or the life science tech lane through the lab tech to training program that we had, that we can not only get people of color that have been overlooked and underutilized and underemployed into entry-level positions, right? But that's, that's not enough. That's, that's a starting but also be engaged and Cortex can be a convener for a connection between employers, the demand side, training organizations, and the supply side. Young men and women, um, students unemployed, underemployed, right? Um, older workers that have been, you know, weren't ready for retirement, but it happened, right? So we can be that convener. And once we get an individual in a job, then it's um, our job is to work with the employers to do a series of lifelong upskilling and learning so that we provide not just a ladder but scaffolding for those individuals to move up through the organization. And again, I think in 15-year time frame, I'd like to see that um, um, some individuals that came through early on in our program that you would never have imagined um, will end up in a C-suite position for a company because they not only helped them get into a company but worked with employers to help them move up through the company. Um, and so th that's how we'll measure success is the number of people. And, and, and the thing that's important to know, it's not just what happens in the 200-acre Cortex district. It's Cortex is in a 200-acre district, but Cortex is for the region. And so I told the board when they were hiring me, I want to count successes. If I help um, either in a landing of a division of a company and they end up in uh, 39 North or North, wherever, but I was part of that. I, I want to get credit for that, right? It doesn't all have to be here. We're here for the region. So our, if we have a series of workforce training programs and partnerships with um, other providers, um, I, I don't want to just count the number of people employed at Cortex, but the number of people in our region who've gotten these opportunities. I had read that uh, the board had asked you, or maybe you asked the board, is Cortex a place or an idea? Yeah. 
What's that answer? The easy thing is to measure it too much as a place, right? It's easy. You can put on a sheet, a master plan. You can see bricks and mortar. You can count square footage. But that's, I think, a little bit impoverished because it is more of a, um, a center for knowledge and skills and training and innovation and connectedness and convening. And um, so that definition, I think it's um, idea, something more abstract first, and of course with a whole portfolio of place, right? A lot of the stuff is gonna be place. We're gonna build, for example, if we get into an industry support, the investment the federal government's making with NGA, and if we lure companies here that want to play in some of that and they need secure, it's called skiff space to do some government contract work, well, that, that's, that's specialized bricks and mortar that they'll need. And if we provide that, we're providing a key amenity for Cortex District and the region. Same is true if we lure a, um, a life science company that needs lab space, specialized space. Well, that, that's an incredible investment you can touch and count and feel. And we bring those um, um, people here, jobs here, but then we are, because of our programs, assuring that people from throughout the region come to those jobs and those networking opportunities and those innovation boot camp things and then go back to wherever they want in the region and thrive. So the answer is it's a place and an idea? I would say it's an idea and a place. I would emphasize the, the idea more. If you would, one more time, just address those people over my shoulder who are watching you. How can they help you achieve this? It's a very lofty, noble, long distance goal. How can they help you achieve your dreams for this place? Yeah, I think that's, you know, first of all, Dennis, I think if we don't, as a region, all come together and think of this as a shared responsibility, that if there is an unemployed or underemployed single mom from wherever in St. Louis, right? And um, there's, um, she has dreams and hopes, but her worldview and her opportunity set means that she ends up in X job, right? And it's um, um, not as fulfilling as it could be, and it doesn't utilize her, um, her potential. So that, that, that matters to all of us, right? And that, that our job should be to figure out ways to eliminate barriers or create opportunities and put them in front of people. So. And, and the really hard thing, Dennis, is that these are systems problems. And when you have a systems problem, it's not like you go here and fix this one piece. So the fact that so many people of color um, are underemployed means that it's because of sometimes unsafe housing, not healthy food, not great schooling, um, lack of access to transportation, um, um, lack of mentorship opportunities, um, th things that I all, I, I had it all when I grew up. Right. Even though I grew up from parents who were poor, I had all of those things that I just listed were available to me. A and that's simply not the case for so many. So the hard part is, and the reason it takes a partnership in all of us, is whether you work for the food bank or company X or transportation, we have to care about the entire system because we can't just go in and fix one piece because it won't work. And that makes it really hard. So you're asking your fellow St. Louisans to be a part of the solution, to get involved. To get involved and to, and to understand that they should care about everyone's welfare because it's good for the region and ultimately good for themselves. Sam, thank you so much for spending all this time with us and telling us about Cortex. I think I have a much better understanding. I hope the audience does too. And in 10 years, let's meet again and celebrate everything that this, is, this place has done. For sure. That it's known worldwide as being the spark plug of St. Louis. Thank you.